Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Ethereum, standing on a cliff. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So as of this video, the valuation of Ethereum is coming in right around $1,200. You can see it's actually $1,199 at the time that I'm starting this video. Now, one of the things we've talked about is that Ethereum's valuation will likely return home to the lower fair value regression band before this bear market is over. This is something we've maintained for quite a long period of time. The general idea is that the bear markets take us back down to the lower regression band, which as always is fit to quote unquote non-bubble data. And the whole idea is that you know, dip buying and whatnot during the bear market can always sound like it's going the way that you want or it can look like it. But in reality, what's actually happening is Ethereum is just putting in a series of lower highs. Okay, I can't tell you how many times I've spent, you know, listening to people say Ethereum's holding up relatively well. It, it, it might be true on some pairs, but the, the reality on the, on the USD pair is that we have been putting in simply lower highs for over a year now at 4,800 and then at, at 3,600 or so, and then again at 2,000, and then again at 17, 1,800, once again at, at 15, 1,600. And the, the problem is that these, these counter trend rallies, these bear market rallies have a way of sort of fooling you into thinking that the bear market is over. So they, they, they get people to YOLO back in, right? It, it sucks up a lot of capital only to eventually go down lower. And then it leaves people constantly trapped, wishing that they had, had simply waited. Now, the reason that I think we have to be at least aware of this potential outcome is that there are at least several reasons, right? Several reasons. One reason is, you know, last cycle, Ethereum's valuation dropped 95% in the bear market. So to assume that you can't see a 90% drop or an 85% drop, I think is is just simply not true, right? Like Ethereum has dropped 81, 82%, but it doesn't mean it can't drop a lot further. I mean, it could theoretically go down 90% if it wanted to by the end of this bear market, which would get us below $500. I have been clear that I think the, the deep value range for Ethereum for this bear market is likely somewhere between four to six hundred dollars. Now, what I want to draw your attention to beyond the bear market resistance band is we also have the 200-day SMA. Okay, so let's go take a look at that really quick and see where that lines up on Ethereum's on Ethereum's bear market. You'll notice, and this we've talked about this for the entire year, that every single time that Ethereum gets up to that 200-day SMA, we get rejected. Right, we we simply get rejected. It happened over here at at you know 3,500, 3,600, and it also happened over here at around 1,600, 1,700. And this is why I said at the beginning of the bear market that in general, the bear market, the 200-day SMA, while it maybe wasn't as important to a lot of people in the bull market, in the bear market it becomes very important because a lot of times these counter trend rallies, these bear market rallies, just simply get rejected at their 200-day SMA. So. The thing I want to draw your attention to specifically is, you know, we have this trend of putting in higher lows. The problem is that as long as we may remain within the context of the bear market, which you could argue we are, especially considering we're not at the low regression band, we do that sometimes, right? And then eventually the floor, the floor falls out, okay? You sometimes just simply put in higher lows for a while. Doesn't really mean anything, right? And the problem that I, I see oftentimes is that bear markets, in bear markets, valuations of assets can actually spend more days going up than going down. And so it can constantly feel like things are heading in the right direction. The problem is that it only takes a few weeks to completely wipe out so many of those gains, right? Like if, if Ethereum's valuation against the US dollar were to fall below sort of these higher lows, I mean, just to take a few weeks and if it comes down in this area, it basically means all of this stuff, completely null and void, right? It was just higher lows, sucked in a lot more money. That was it, right? Higher lows to get you excited, but also lower highs, and then eventually breaking down to the downside. The other way to look at this as well is the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation. This is something we talked about quite a bit as well. And the whole idea, and this is sort of my thesis, is that we just remain in a long distribution phase. 
is no secret that I became bearish on the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation right here in May of 2022. Okay, this is when I really became very bearish on the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation. I actually, um, you know, thought at the time that it was going to go down quite a bit. And we did. And then we came back up, right? I think, um, you know, I, I think that the merge and the hype behind the merge led to sort of this continuation of this distribution phase that otherwise we simply would not have had. Now, could there be some elements of me rationalizing? There could, right? I, I want to be clear that there could be. But one very similar piece is that we're sort of breaking down potentially from the same level that we broke down from back then. And this time, you know, we don't necessarily have the merge to look forward to anymore as a reason to generate hype. And in fact, what we're looking what we're looking towards potentially is increased regulation, less less access to cheap capital because the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates, um, and and also the potential unlocking of a lot of staked Ethereum, uh, you know, in 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 potentially just a few months. So now there's plenty plenty of fear out there, and I'm just simply not yet convinced that that this is is going to remain up here for very much longer. So. My general expectation, of course, is that the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation will break down. OK, now, if you look at, at sort of these lower highs that Ethereum's Bitcoin valuation is putting in, we're actually currently testing it. Right. So, you know, you could argue that it might test this for a little while. Maybe it bounces in the same way, though. We've also just simply been putting in lower highs. So I think we're coming up to a resolution on this relatively soon. OK. And I think I think we're going to find resolution on this probably within the next one to two weeks. One to two weeks, I think we'll have resolu resolution. It'll either break up, break up, or break down. I think it's going to break down. Now, I want to spend a little bit more time talking about why I think it's going to break down beyond just looking at like the Ethereum Bitcoin chart, beyond just looking at the Ethereum USD chart. Something else we can look at is the social risk. Now, the social risk is something we've talked about quite a bit on this channel, and it's basically looking at, at retail interest in the space, so people tuning into YouTube channels to, to, to talk, like listen about cryptocurrency, people uh, following you know, certain accounts on Twitter, even layer ones and exchanges, and it, and it models where the social risk is any, at any given time. Now, what's interesting is you can actually color code it by Ethereum's price, or sorry, take Ethereum's price and color code it by the social risk. And what you'll see, and I think, is I think we're at a very similar spot right now that we were back over here in summer of 2018. Okay, so I think we're at a, at a very similar spot. Um, so this sort of bounce here corresponds to, to this bounce going into the merge, and then we come back down put in higher lows for a while, right? Just like we're doing today. But then guess what happened at the end of the day, right? At the end of the bear market, Ethereum eventually broke down. Now, I want to draw your attention to this first leg down by Ethereum after, after this sort of dead cat bounce. So this leg down right here in sort of the summer and Q3 of 2018, remember that time frame, okay? So July through September of 2018. That was this period right here. What's interesting though, is if you overlay Bitcoins, so let me overlay Bitcoin's valuation during that same time, what you'll notice, and I need to switch this over to a, a log scale so that it, um, so we actually can read it a little bit better. What you'll notice is that during this time of Ethereum's collapse from that dead cat bounce, Bitcoin, which is the yellow line, was actually just simply going sideways, right? So the Bitcoin USD valuation was going sideways. And what was happening at the same time as well, right? If you remember, the Bitcoin dominance was going up, right? So the purple line, let me make this a different color so we can, we can see it a little bit better. So style, let me make it a white line. So the Bitcoin dominance was going up. Bitcoin USD was more or less going sideways, sort of just testing the prior prior lower part of the range. Ethereum USD was going down. So Bitcoin dominance up, Bitcoin USD sideways, Ethereum USD down, therefore Ethereum Bitcoin down, which would correspond to a move down here by the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation. It would also 
support the general idea here that Bitcoin USD is in the process, or I'm sorry, Bitcoin dominance is in the process of, of breaking up, right? I know it. I know it's been a long time coming, right? And it, it had been putting in um, lower lows, but you could argue that we're now finally looking at, at some type of, of a double bottom break above the 20 week SMA and off to the races, which is, is not that dissimilar from what we saw in 2018, right? I mean, if you if you just look, draw the line across and let me get rid of this, let me get rid of this. Bounce off of around that 39, you know, 30, 39 percent level up to the 20 week rejection back down. When we went back down over here, we went back down to about 40 percent. So look, held at 39, bounce up to the 20 week, held at 39, bounce up to the 20 week. Go back down, put in a higher low, put in a higher low, break above the 20 week, right? So I think we're sort of in this area right here. Now you might say, well, why is the Bitcoin dominance so much lower? At this point over here, it was at 45%, but now it's only at 41 to 42%. So why is there a huge distinction? One of the reasons is because of the inclusion of stable coins. Okay, so the inclusion of stable coins has has really changed the the landscape of the Bitcoin dominance. It doesn't mean it's not going to go up. I still think it is. But if you look at this is what the dominance looks like of Bitcoin when you include stables. Okay, so it's been putting in lower lows. When you exclude stables, it's actually been putting in higher lows. Basically, since since over here in May of 2021 higher lows since May of 2021. So you could argue that the Bitcoin dominance has already been moving up, right? And a lot of altcoins have, have taken huge hits on Bitcoin this year. Furthermore, while I know I know some people are optimistic on the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation and, and you know, it, it's sort of this idea to, to pretend like it's only moved up this year. I mean, if you look at a 12 month candle, it still is red, you know? Like it still has moved down. It's down 11% this year. It's just that oftentimes we only compare it to what happened recently. But again, the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation has in fact fallen this year. And there's a good chance it's going to continue to fall. Now, I want to say something. Over the macro scale, I remain bullish on Ethereum. And I, I don't really like being on the side of, of having to say, or at least feeling like I have to say I'm bearish. But I, I've said it all year. And I will continue to say it until these conditions are, are met more than likely. Okay, so I will likely just be saying the same thing until these conditions are finally met. And then I'll, I'll be back, you know, I'll, I'll be back on the bullish side. The problem is, of course, you know, these communities and people I used to interact with that were bullish on Ethereum, Ethereum, they're still bullish. They don't really like the fact that I'm not. And so, you know, it, it, it can be difficult, uh, you know, trying to show like, look, you can be bearish on something over the short to medium term but still be bullish over the macro scale. So I do think you're still looking at, at a leg lower here on Ethereum's valuation against the US dollar. I think around that four to $600 range is, is a good spot to, to begin looking for that same type of value that we saw in the last cycle. Um, but there's no guarantees on, on exactly when that's going to occur, right? So I, I, think, it's, I think it's worthwhile to at least consider um, you know, that side of the equation. The other thing I, I think might be an interesting way to look at this is to actually look at Ethereum's bear market compared to the last bear market. So this is Bitcoin's bear market compared to the last one. It's it's actually pretty much right where the 2014 bear market was. If you take a look at the Ethereum bear market and you take it out to the peak and let's just isolate through the accumulation phase, you could argue that, you know, even though we haven't seen that major capitulation that we saw back in 2018, partially because of a potential delay due to the Ethereum merge, doesn't mean it can't just slowly bleed here, just like it did back over here, right? We, we had a capitulation, we surged back up, and then we still bled later on before we actually begin the next bull market. So I still think Ethereum is likely looking at, at lower prices eventually. I think this is supported by the idea of the social risk. Social risk is finally putting in new lows. When the social risk is going down, typically the Bitcoin dominance goes up. And historically, I, you know, it's only happened once before, so not a lot of data to work with. But historically, when the social risk really starts to plummet, like it is right now, and you can see it when you just look at the sort of the raw values here, as the social risk plummets, like it did back over here in 2018, that was where Ethereum took its next leg down. 
And that's also where Bitcoin remained, remained at, its, at its prior low. So I guess the telltale sign would be like, what does Bitcoin do? Is it able to hold above 15K while most everything else goes down? Because if it does, then that will support the thesis of the dominance of Bitcoin surging to the upside for a while. So that's where we currently stand. Again, Ethereum right now is coming in right around $1,200. I understand that you know a, a six hundred dollar Ethereum or even a four hundred dollar Ethereum is is another fifty percent correction or more from these levels, but I, I do think there is reason to think that it could happen. Not only from a price perspective and a technical perspective, and I, I know there's sort of the fundamental idea of 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 you know burn all the all the Ethereum that's been burned and whatnot, but the other side of it is that we are looking at a recession. Right, likely we're looking at a recession. This is supported uh, with the inversion of the yield curve. So if you take a look at the yield curve, you can see that it's inverted. When you look at the spread on Treasury yields, uh, when they get like when they get to be this inverted, we we tend to go into a recession in the not so distant future. So something that we have to consider, right? If a recession is coming, it's likely not a good thing for risk assets like cryptocurrencies, and therefore. You know, you also have this less access to cheap capital because the Federal Reserve has been raising interest rates. OK, I mean, interest rates have been this is basically the the most aggressive they've ever been in, in increasing interest rates as quickly as they have. And, and they're doing it, of course, because inflation remains high. So you tie all of this in together. You you discuss as well, like the, the bear market that the S&P 500 is in. And, and I think I, I think you have to consider the the downside case for ethereum doesn't mean it's going to always go down of course i i do think we'll get back to a, a bull market at some point but i don't really think right now is that time and i i think ethereum is heading home sooner rather than later don't know if it's going to head home for christmas or not although it would be nice but i do think the lower regression band will eventually be hit and, and once we're down there, I think we can start talking about a future bull market for Ethereum. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. If you're not subscribed, give the video a thumbs up. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.